एवरीवन सो लेट्स स्टार्ट विद योर टेस्ट एट डिस्कशन सो व्हाट आई विल टेल यू दैट इन आईआर यू हैव टू गिव थ्योरी इफ पॉसिबल ठीक है मतलब इफ पॉसिबल मींस दैट यू हैव द वर्ड लिमिट ठीक है देन आफ्टर राइटिंग द थ्योरी यू हैव टू कोट सेवरल स्कॉलर्स एंड देयर बुक्स एंड देयर व्यू पॉइंट्स एंड दीज व्यू पॉइंट शुड बी देयर टू सपोर्ट योर पॉइंट्स ओनली ठीक है इट्स नॉट लाइक दैट यू हैव टू कीप ऑन राइटिंग दीज स्कॉलर्स एंड देयर व्यूज यू हैव टू राइट टू सपोर्ट योर पॉइंट्स ठीक सो लेट्स स्टार्ट विद द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन एग्जामिन ब्रीफ द राइज एंड फॉल ऑफ कोल्ड वॉर सो कोल्ड वॉर वॉज द स्टेट ऑफ एनिमिटी स्टेट ऑफ ट्रस्ट डेफिसिट स्टेट ऑफ एंटागोनिज्म एंड स्टेट ऑफ जियो पोलिटिकल राइवलरी बिटवीन यू टू सुपर पावर्स दैट इज यू एस एंड यू एस एस आर ठीक है तो इट वॉज अ हाई स्टेट ऑफ राइवलरी ठीक एंड देर वॉज नो डायरेक्ट कंसंट्रेशन ठीक है हिंस द टर्म कोल्ड वॉर ठीक एंड वॉट वॉज द रीजन ऑफ राइज ऑफ कोल्ड वॉर ठीक है सो कोल्ड वॉर हैज अ मोर हिस्टोरिकल बैकग्राउंड दैन द जियो पोलिटिकल बैकग्राउंड तो वॉट वॉज द हिस्टोरिकल बैकग्राउंड दैट आफ्टर द राइज ऑफ कम्युनिज्म दैट इज आफ्टर नाइनटीन सेवनटीन रशियन रिवोल्यूशन सो कम्युनिस्ट ट्राई टू इंक्रीज द इफेक्ट ऑफ कम्युनिज्म इन द वेस्टर्न वर्ल्ड सपोज दैट कॉमन टर्न वॉज फॉर्म कॉमन फॉर्म वॉज फॉर्म बाय लेनिन एंड स्टालिन रेस्पेक्टिवली सो दीज ट्राई टू इंक्रीज द आइडिया ऑफ कम्युनिज्म सो दिस वॉज क्रिएटिंग ट्रस्ट डेफिसिट एंड फियर इन कैपिटलिस्ट वेस्टर्न यूरोप ठीक है एंड देन देर वॉज वर्ल्ड वॉर इन विच दे हैड साइन ए ट्रीटी विद जर्मन एंड जापान ठीक है तो दिस इंक्रीज द डेफिसिट बिटवीन ट्रस्ट डेफिसिट बिटवीन द वेस्ट एंड द कम्युनिस्ट रशिया ठीक है यू एस एस आर एंड लेटर ऑन ड्यूरिंग द सेकेंड वर्ल्ड वॉर आफ्टर हिटलर इन्वेडेड द यू एस एस आर तो वॉट हैपन वॉज रशियंस बिकम अलाइड विद द वेस्टर्न लिबरल कंट्रीज ठीक बट लिबरल्स वेस्टर्न कंट्रीज लाइक फ्रांस जर्म फ्रांस यू एस एंड ब्रिटिश दे कुड नॉट ओपन अ सेकेंड फ्रंट सो दिस लीड टू द इंक्रीज इन इंक्रीज इन ट्रस्ट डेफिसिट अंडर स्टालिन ठीक है स्टालिन वॉज थॉट डैट वेस्टर्न कंट्रीज आर नॉट ओपनिंग द फ्रंट बिकॉज दे वॉन्ट टू डिस्ट्रॉय रशिया दे वॉन्ट टू डिस्ट्रॉय यू यू एस एस आर एंड जर्मनी ठीक है बिकॉज जर्मनी एंड यू एस एस आर वर फाइटिंग इच अदर तो दे आर नॉट दे आर जस्ट वेटिंग एंड वॉचिंग ठीक है सो डैट जर्मन एंड रशियंस डिस्ट्रॉय दम सेल्स सो दिस लीड टू इंक्रीज इन ट्रस्ट डेफिजिट एंड लेटर ऑन वर्ल्ड वॉर टू इंडेड बाई बॉम्बिंग ऑफ जपान बाई न्यूक्लियर वेपन्स ठीक है हिरोशिमा एंड नागासा की विच फर्दर लीड टू द ट्रस्ट डेफिजिट बिटवीन रशियंस एंड अमेरिकन्स ठीक एंड सेम टाइम ईस्टर्न इन ईस्टर्न यूरोप देर वॉज बर्लिन वॉर ठीक है तो देर वॉर पपेट रिजीम्स इस्टेब्लिश्ड सम वर बाई अमेरिकन सम वर बाई कम्युनिस्ट रशियंस तो दिस ऑल्सो इंक्रीज द एनिमिटी बिटवीन द टू एंड दिस लीड टू द राइज ऑफ कोल्ड वॉर ठीक है सो आई एव गिविन द राइज लाइक बोसोविक रिवोल्यूशन ठीक है लेनिन्स वॉन्टेड कॉमन टर्न टू स्प्रेड कॉम्युनिज्म इन द होल वर्ल्ड ठीक है एंड स्टालिन कॉमन फॉर्म देन द पैक्ट ऑफ जर्मन्स विद द रशियंस इन नाइनटीन थर्टी नाइन देन विद जपैन इन नाइनटीन फोर्टी वन एंड देन देर वॉज अलाइज डिलेइंग टू ओपन द सेकेंड फ्रंट इन द वर्ल्ड वॉर ठीक है एंड देर वॉज पोस्ट 
war puppet regime issue was there that whether democratic or communist regimes will be formed in eastern european countries then manhattan project was hidden by the russians theek hai uh, but later on americans did inform the ussr about the nuclear bombs theek hai then there was bombing of japan and then the mr george keenan who was the ambassador of us to russia and he was mr x who sent a telegram to us that uh, russian soviets were thinking that they were in a uh, constant war with the united states theek hai constant state of war so he suggested the policy of containment and which was later accepted by the truman doctrine in 1946 and it was the application of containment and it was the end of monroe doctrine and there was beginning of active involvement of the americans in the world affairs and america started supporting freedom and self determination of of people anywhere everywhere theek hai this was enough indication that there will be a uh, guerrilla warfare in the eastern european countries and the puppet regimes of the soviets theek hai so what were the events of cold wars berlin blockade which was the first and last event in europe theek hai so this lead to the increase in trust under europeans of americans theek hai and west germans also joined the nato in 1955 and which lead to the operationalization of tit for tat policy and russians brought warsaw pact for the americans nato pact and then uh, strategic bipolarity was established in europe under russians and the soviets and the americans and in asia pacific uh, soviet russians image got increased communism value got increased after the victory of communism in china and then there was vietnam war uh, which which uh, extended for uh, two decades and it decreased the hegemony of the americans in the asian countries okay and then there is in there in middle east where israel was established in 1948 and it it was like a us outpost and sento and suez canal crisis proved the uh, supremacy of americans and soviets okay suez crisis ended the hegemony of british and the end of pax britannica and how the end of cold war happened to so ussr entered into deep economic problems because of its uh, lending policies to its puppet regimes and because of the drop in oil prices and because of the costly arms race with the americans and because of the failures of afghan war with the mujahideen and then there was a malta summit between senior bush and gorbachev which formally ended the cold war and then it was followed by cooperation under start one treaty in 1990 and then warsaw pact was dissolved in 1991 and then there was formal declaration of end of end of ussr itself in december 1991 and commonwealth of independent state was established theek hai to this is how cold war ended theek so there are they i have i have given several information that bernard baruch coined the word cold war cold war and walter lipman popularized the term theek hai this you can mention in your answer and then social constructivist says that cold war was story of misunderstanding miscalculation and missed opportunities theek so these are the comments and in there is a debate whether today cold war is ongoing or not so there are some scholars who suppose that cold war is going and some says that it is not going and some has come up with cold war 2.0 to so, the people who support cold war they say that alexi arbatrov is there who says that uh, there is still a mutual distrust and russia's geopolitical ambitions are still there theek hai to these things are ongoing and those who says that there is no cold war like stephen wolves himself is there 
he says that world is not a bipolar but lopsided multipolar so bipolar bipolarity has gone Vashli Kashin is there he says that Russia is not USSR anymore theek hai and there are scholars who go for US China issues more theek hai so for example Henry Kissinger says that US and China are on the foothills of cold war theek hai so these are the debates ongoing in today's time theek so in this way you can write your answer in very few points were given so i have given you ample amount of information if you even didn't know about cold war i am hoping that you must have got something from my explanation here and if you have any doubt please message me theek hai in the group and second question is about cold war 2.0 and us china relations so you can say first basically you have to do is uh, if it is it's a 20 marker or 15 marker question you have to define cold war itself first okay if that was a geopolitical tension between us and soviet union and then thereafter you can mention that new cold war is about between us and china okay and there is a rising tension between the two country which prompt many expert to warm of a new cold war okay and what are the similarities there are multiple global uh, geographical theater and there are multiple multiple vectors like this technology war there is a trade war so multiple field is also involved and then you have to mention scholars like stanley johnny who says that covid-19 have aggravated the crisis theek hai and these two country have taken more hostile position towards each other okay and political elites of the both country considers themselves as rivals okay and us national security strategy 2017 says that china is a revisionist power and it is antithetical to us values and interest and so there is a sub- subtle element that american stakes Chinese rise as an existential threat. ठीक है. So this increases the chance of cold war between them. ठीक. So and there is a popular imagination also. Public American public also takes Chinese as their rival and Chinese public is taking Americans as their rivals. ठीक है. And what are the counterpoints? Counterpoints are that another st- study is that uh, there is. Uh, they hesitate to employ the cold war concept because analogy with uss and us and US, uss are conflict and its implications for ir so there is huge implications that it will take other countries as their satellites and they have to take sides theek hai so these things you have to consider theek hai unlike the cold war period which was characterized as bipolar today's world is lopsided multipolar there are many players like india russia japan european unions theek hai so this is not like cold war theek and then some scholars say that this is a whole different game theek hai so this is nothing like cold war this is a classic example of thucydides trap where a rising power challenging an incumbent power theek hai so you have to conclude in this sense that it is a classic example of thucydides trap china is a rising power which wants to challenge the incumbent power and various points i have given you here that henry kissinger in his book world order says that they are in the foothills of cold war theek hai and nss national security strategy document 2022 mentions china having capability and intent to modify international order to its favor it also mentions us intent to out compete china so there is a uh, uh, acceptance of Ch- chinese challenge in the american lobby theek hai and Ch- americans consider freedom of navigation in south china sea and they want to protect it because two third of the maritime trade passes through it and this shows uh, the american understanding of the problem and in the negative sense you can say that world is complex independent 
interdependency is there american and chinese are the uh, most trading countries they get they trade among themselves a lot more than other countries so there is dependence between these two country so war is very not feasible okay world is also distorted multipolar take okay? so it is not bipolar anymore so this is also negative but robert d kaplan is a scholar who says that a new cold war has begun ranging from semiconductor to submarine and from blockbuster to lunar exploration okay so these are the lines by robert kaplan and mir simon says that uh, he is an offensive realist he says that china's rise will not be peaceful okay and china is aiming for hegemony because it has huge military build up and huntington has given the theory of class of civilization and in this class of civilization he put chinese challenge above than the islamic challenge okay then there is michael pillsbury who in his book the thousand the hundred years marathon he says that china's challenge china is the biggest challenge to american position in the world today okay these are the lines important lines given by important people in their books so you can deduce from this okay you can write this thucydides trap uh, after studying thucydides trap graham malichan says that in 12 of the 16 cases of thucydides trap it resulted into war so there is much more possibility of war between americans and the chinese so in this context what india should do sri shankar menon says that india should not become a sacrificial lamb okay and india should try to be friendly with both countries nirupma roy says that india should closely align with the americans okay syam saran says that good relations with the americans will give an space to maneuver with with china and it will give us bargaining chip with china okay and isolated india will be more vulnerable because china is breathing down our neck only the its garwal crisis has happened it's our neighbor we cannot escape it okay so let's move on to third question so third question is cuban missile crisis what a high point of what come to be known as the cold war okay so what are the major reasons and consequences to cold war aapko main bata diya hu itna dil se bata hi raha hu तो आप लोग खुद से भी स्टडी करो ठीक है तो क्यूबा में क्या हुआ कि अमेरिकन वॉन्टेड बटिस्टा गवर्नमेंट ठीक है बट फिडल क्रास्टो सीज द पावर ठीक है एंड देन अमेरिकन ब्रोक द डिप्लोमेटिक टाइज एंड सो देर फोर इन सिक्सटी वन कास्टो अनाउंस डैट ही इज अ मार्क्सिस्ट क्यूबा इज अ सोशलिस्ट कंट्री सो देर वॉज एन इमिडियंट थ्रेट ऑफ अमेरिकन इन विजन सो क्यूबंस वॉन्टेड हेल्प फ्रॉम द रशियंस एंड रशियंस वर वेरी हैप्पी टू अप्लाइज तो निकिता क्रुश्चेव स्टार्टेड हेल्पिंग रशियंस क्यूबंस बाय गिविंग देम बाय पुटिंग रशियंस मिसाइल इन क्यूबन लैंड सो दिस लीड टू डायरेक्ट थ्रेट टू अमेरिकन्स सो दिस लीड टू अ ह्यूज क्राइसिस बिटवीन देम एंड द टू कंट्रीज केम वेरी क्लोज टू यूज न्यूक्लियर वेपन्स ठीक है तो दिस इज क्लासिक एग्जाम्पल्स ऑफ चिकन्स गेम वेयर both countries agree to uh, dial down the aggressive actions theek hai to cuban missile crisis happened in 1962 only and classic example of chicken's game uh, it resulted into more cooperation theek hai to major reasons for this that americans uh, took lead in intercontinental ballistic missile development and uh, they had put jupiter missile in turkey and uh, western countries and which made uh, soviets afraid okay so soviets put cuban cuba as soviets put their missile in cuba to better bargain with the americans and this led to crisis and crisis resolved after the intervention of the secretary general of the united nations and then uh, Uh, americans decided to withdraw their missile from the turkey and uh, soviets withdrawn their missile from the cuba theek hai and uh, this was it about reason and you can write about 
what were the consequences the consequences was this that crisis was averted there was a development of hotline theek hai then there was a uh, signing of nuclear ban test treaty between americans soviets and the british that they will not do um, above ground nuclear testing they will do it only underground theek hai and raghu malhotra comments that nuclear warfare was thankfully averted the cuban missile crisis did not mark the resolution of the cold war nor the culmination of the ever growing arms race means that cold war continued and the arms race continued even then theek hai so in detailed phase what happened so ctbt was signed outer space treaty was signed non proliferation treaty was signed and Hels- helsinki accords was also signed there was a golden shake in space also theek hai to please read about these things and in reach your knowledge theek hai to cold uh, cuban missile crisis was an important event in cold war which made the world realize the threat posed by the weapon race of the americans and the soviets and it proved to be a kick start for the movement to make the world safe from horrors of a nuclear war so this is a good conclusion so let's move on to the next question which is about non alignment or so model answer is about non aligned movement so i will take it as non alignment movement theek hai so non aligned movement was coined by george leska theek and it was founded by the country who do not want to be sided by any power blocks um they do not want to be the satellite states they want to chart their own path theek hai so it was founded in belgrade 1961 by the leadership of nehru sukarno who was indonesian leader egyptian leader gamal abdel nasser kwame nkrumah soviet uh, yugoslavian president tito theek hai so these were the leaders you can write as in your introduction so you have to write about the relevance so what are the positive relevance what are the negative so whatever were positive i have put plus marks in front of them and what was negative i have put negative marks in front of them theek hai so positive is that nav has been the vehicle of vehicle for developing countries to assert their independence theek hai from the competitive claims of the two superpowers so this is the positive and the negative thing is that end of the cold war uh, they are no longer two rival blocks to be non aligned with theek hai to power blocks have ended so why this name is continuing so this is a point that can be written to prove the irrelevance of the name theek hai so this was given by tharur in his is the non aligned movement relevant today article theek hai so you can also mention that jay shankar harshvi pant ji partha sarthi sri raja mohan these talks about negative about the nam theek hai jay shankar mentions that contemporary global politics block and alliance are less relevant today as we are moving towards largely loose arrangements theek hai and harshvi pant added that nam was okay when india was not economic or militarily powerful now india has to compete with china which is increasingly taking lead over india's leadership status so india does not need nam now theek hai india needs better countries to align with theek hai so ji partha sarthi says that nam gave india flexibility theek hai non alignment but nam never been a forum of any consequence theek hai so it was not uh, a forum of any consequence ji partha sarthi says so he is highly critical of nam Sri Raja Mohan also says that Nam was irrelevant even before the end of Cold War. Okay, so these are the words you can write in negative, and you can mention the positivity of Nam that Tharoor redefined Nam itself as a movement for country that are not aligned with any major power, shaping a persona. Nam is shaping a persona that is increasingly vocal about resisting the hegemony of the sole superpowers, America. and in asserting the independence of its members overwhelmingly former colonies in the, in the developing world theek hai so this is like countries are balancing unipolar america by soft balancing theek hai so
So three piece in the Vashan says that non relevance is about quintessence of non alignment was freedom of judgment and action. So it is more about judgment and action. It is more about justice. Thick. See, Raja Mohan's that Naam has always been Tabula Rasa. Thick. These are the lines you can use. And in conclusion, you can talk about M K Narayan. Thick. That Naam, Naam still resonates with many third world country, and it offers an alternative platform for putting forward different viewpoints. Thick. It would. Hence, be premature to pronounce the death of Nam. Okay, so you can mention these things. So I have tried to give you most current information. Okay, so I have given uh, the recent, recently held held meeting of Nam in Uganda in January twenty twenty four itself. Okay, so this meeting was held. जनवरी में 2024 पिछले महीने ही हुआ है ठीक है तो इसमें जयशंकर बोलते हैं ही वेलकम द न्यू मेंबर साउथ सूडान तो नैम्स मेंबरशिप इज कंटिन्यूसली ग्रोइंग दिस मीन्स डैट दिस इज अ ग्रोइंग ऑर्गेनाइजेशन ग्रोइंग कोऑपरेशन ठीक है तो अगर ग्रो कर रहा है तो इट इज़ वेरी रिलेवेंट ठीक है एंड ही प्रपोज India as a leader of South, because he mentions that India has provided vaccines to hundred country. India ex uh, vouched for African Union and made it a member of G20. Okay, and India is a developing voice in G20. So these uh, these made India a leader for them in bigger organizations. Okay. and he mentions several new challenges which can be tackled by nam countries theek hai to he mentions that there is issue of debt there is issue of inflation there is issue of growth challenges there is issue of climate change theek hai and there is issue of rising inequality and domination post covid theek hai and he says that nam should respond to these challenges to so nam should act as a leader theek hai so this itself proves the relevance of nam today it can tackle these changing scenarios these upcoming challenges in the world for the developing countries theek okay? hai and he says that nam should aim to reform multilateralism so nam can play a role in united nations reform theek okay? hai so this is the today's relevance of nam theek okay? hai and he projects india as a leadership so and also the words of jayashankar i have quoted here that he said that the voice of nam is here to be heard the voice of nam is here to stay and grow this means that nam is very relevant so in this way you have to conclude positively and you can even mention modi's modi's word of 2020 when he attended the virtual summit of azerbaijan theek hai so today humanity faces its most serious crisis that is covid nam can help promote global solidarity modi has said okay then you can mention several realist scholar who always criticize nam like madan tanvi madan is there ps raghavam is there sri ragam raja mohan is there he said the nam is in a state of coma india was never to be non aligned madan has said then rs raghavam says that non alignment as foreign policy concept is dead theek okay? hai So these are the lines you can mention, and then there is liberal school which always praises Nam. Okay, like Aparna Pandey, she says that Nam helped India India to maintain relationship with both superpowers. Okay, without coercion. Okay, then there is T V Paul. He says that it is an example of soft balancing with weaker states against superpowers through the use of normative powers. Okay, then Sasi Tharoor says that no uh, non alignment to multi alignment. Okay. this issue based alignment is also there so these you can write theek okay? hai and to conclude you can write that pm modi said that there was a time when people were neutral by creating equal distances but now we are neutral by creating equal partnership so this is the better way to write so let's move on to your sixth question discuss the collapse of soviet union and its impact on 
international politics so this is the end of cold war i have already talked about cold war its end so what were the reasons of collapse of soviet union gorbachev policy that is paris troika glasnost and sinatra doctrine okay these three were the reason then there was us policy which wanted to make russians lose bigger the enemy costly arm race then mujahideen war in russia in afghanistan okay these things were the policy of americans which led to the collapse of soviet union so you can uh, give the implication that end of cold war was there rise of unipolarity americans become the unipolar power then there was unipolar ideological emergence like liberalism was taken as the victor theek hai then there was politics of europe changed that eastern european countries become liberal countries democratic countries and the economic relationship with the western european countries increased theek hai so these things you can mention then rise of fundamentalism in central asian states that end of cold war will lead to class of civilization theek hai to islamization of countries increased central asian countries declared the enterprise islamic republics theek hai and then there was change in asian politics theek and there was country like india who were very shocked by the demise of the ussr and they had to totally change their foreign policy from anti americans to pro americans theek hai india started lookist to cooperate with the american allies like asian countries so in this way they wanted to make friendship with us then india looked for israel to make friendly relationship with the unipolar power that is america theek hai these things happened nam relevance decreased because of the end of bipolarity theek hai and then you can mention arm control started increasing start one treaty signed start two treaty was signed these things you can mention uh, new economic new international economic order of the nam countries decreased because many countries started aligning with the americans wto established theek hai neo liberal neo liberal policies were adopted by many countries india also itself went through lpg reforms theek hai to relevance of nio decreased so in this way you can write and conclude in this way thank you for your time if you have any question please message me on whatsapp so thank you for your time have a good day